All right, guys, what is happening? And uh, welcome back. So it's dev block season and Gaijin's been really busy adjusting the infrared signatures for aircraft while also balancing the efficacy of IR missiles in general. So in addition to adjusting the mechanics of how IR missiles work, Gaijin also just changed how fuselage and afterburning infrared signatures are modeled. So from how I understand it, the infrared spectrum, you know, um, they're taking that all of that into account now. So the afterburning plume is now a separate IR signature from the fuselage of the aircraft. So I guess that's pretty cool. But lots of players seem to, you know, be asking Gaijin for more information, you know, outside of the dev blog that was put out. You know, what do these changes actually mean? So is Gaijin nerfing infrared missiles or are they buffing infrared missiles or are they just adding realism? A giant component of this, of course, is how IR missiles themselves are going to work after these adjustments. I mean, I've been playing, uh, you know, a couple matches here and there. And for example, the AM9L uh, seems to have taken an L, but I mean, it's it's not as good as it used to be. It definitely is uh, hungry for flares more than it used to be. But, you know, it's still a good missile overall. I fully expect more advanced infrared missiles like the AM9M and R73, just to mention a few, are coming pretty soon. Probably um, not not this patch, I don't think, but maybe in the next patch after that. So these new missiles will have better infrared counter countermeasure logic. And I want to break down here in general how IRCAM actually works, meaning that this information is freely available on the internet. We're not talking about specific missiles because, of course, that is not releasable information by nations and it never will be. All right, so what is IRCM or IRCAM? So infrared countermeasures, flares, are based on a source of infrared radiation with a higher intensity than the target. So when an IR missile sees a flare in its field of vision, it may overpower the original infrared signal from the aircraft, the target, and provide erroneous steering cues to the missile, causing it to miss its intended target. All right, so what is IRCCM then? So IRCUM, I know it's a little bit confusing. Infrared missile manufacturers didn't just accept that their stuff could be flared, be decoyed. So they added logic and advanced processing to infrared missile seekers, which detect the presence of flares and reject them as targets, allowing the seeker to continue tracking the real target. The IRCCM built into advanced missiles have two components. First is the switch which detects the flare in the seeker field of vision and activates the second part, which is the response logic. The response is the action the missile seeker takes to reject the flare. All right, so as you probably guessed, the switch and the response have to function perfectly together in tandem. So if either one of them don't work for some reason, of course, then the missile will be decoyed. So there are several types of switches and responses. I'm going to go over the switches first. So switching techniques include rise time, two color or spectral, kinematic and spatial. So the first one, rise time, this is where a missile employs a temporal switch, rise time, which keeps track of the target's energy level. A flare in the seeker field of vision is indicated by a sudden increase in the received energy within a fixed time window. If a seeker with a temporal discriminator noticed an increase in energy beyond a predetermined threshold during a preset window of time, the seeker would activate the infrared counter countermeasure. All right, so the next one here is spectral, and this is where a missile has a two color switch which samples the energy level in two different bands. A sudden jump in one band's energy compared to the other band's energy indicates a flare in the seeker field of vision. All right, so the next switch is kinematic. Flares separate from the dispensing aircraft quickly due to their high aerodynamic drag. I mean, you've seen it in game. You hit the flare button, you know, they're out and gone pretty fast. So the missile's gonna notice that. It's gonna be like, hey, what the heck is going on? That is an abrupt change in line of sight rate due to the flare's rapid deceleration. Now this switch works best from a side aspect shot because, you know, the relative motion is pretty large. It really doesn't work really good as a kinematic discriminator if this is a head-on or a stern engagement because there, there just isn't much relative motion. 
All right, the spatial switch uses the physical separation of the flare from the target to discriminate between the two. So as the flare separates from the rear of the aircraft, the missile seeker is gonna see the, uh, the target, the aircraft on the forward side of the FOV or field of vision, and it's gonna see the flare on the rear side of the FOV. So once the seeker fully establishes that there are two hot objects on opposite sides of its field of vision, the switch to the infrared counter countermeasure mode is made. So what I've covered is the general way that a missile will detect that a flare is in its field of vision and then switch. So that's the first component. So what I'm gonna talk about next here are the responses. Like what is the missile gonna do about it? So the responses I'll go over are the simple memory, the seeker push ahead, seeker push pull, seeker attenuation, and then there's electronic uh, field of vision gating and time phase blanking, which I'll probably just gloss over. So the first one is simple memory. When a simple memory response is initiated, the missile continues the maneuver it was performing just prior to the switch. Using system logic, this response assumes the flare will separate to the rear or aft of the target. The missile rejects the seeker track data from the flare and maintains its motion relative to the target, meaning it continues its proportional navigation intercept to the target. Now, proportional navigation, or otherwise known as PRONAV, is the guidance law which nearly all air-to-air -air missiles with a homing function use. So while the missile is homing on the target, it is concurrently waiting for the flare to leave the seeker field of vision. But there is a time component to this. The missile will continue to reject track data until the flare leaves the field of vision or the switch times out, at which point the infrared counter countermeasure kind of stops working and the seeker just resets back to normal track mode. If the switch times out while the flare remains in the seeker field of vision, the flare is successful, right? It decoys the missile. This is why it's important to drop your flares, reduce your infrared signature by coming out of burner, and then to maneuver in a new direction. Otherwise, the missile might just reacquire you because it, it's just extrapolated your flight path. Do the pronav, and it'll be waiting for you. All right, the next response is seeker push ahead. The seeker push ahead response causes the seeker gimbals to propel the seeker forward in a direction of movement of the target. Pushing the seeker forward causes the flare to leave the field of vision faster than with simple memory, minimizing the amount of time the missile is not tracking the target. But the more push ahead, like the more degrees per second applied, the faster the flare will leave the field of vision. But if you do it too much, right, if the bias forward is too strong, the seeker may push ahead of the target, causing both the target and the flare to exit the field of vision. But this might not be a problem, especially if the seeker push ahead response is uh, in conjunction with another response like um, the simple memory. Now this next one seems to intuitively work with the spatial switch and this response is a seeker push pull. So the push pull is when a flare and target are on opposite sides of the seeker's field of view. As the energy of the target and the flare is scanned across the detector, the received energy will rise in full. When the flare's energy is at its peak level, the seeker gimbals pull the seeker away from it. When a seeker detects the least amount of energy from the target, the gimbals will pull the seeker in the direction of the target. As a result, the seeker shifts away from the flare and toward the coolest part of the infrared spectrum in the seeker's field of view. All right, so the last one I'll talk about in detail here is the sector attenuation response. So an attenuation filter is placed across a portion of the seeker field of vision, making it less sensitive to objects in that portion of the FOV. If the target being tracked is in the center of the field of view, this, this attenuation filter is placed aft and below of the target, and it should reduce any flare energy received. The seeker will continue to track the target if the attenuated flare energy is less than the unattenuated target energy. All right, so that was a lot of technical jargon there. I'll save you from the last two, um, which are FOV gating and time phase blanking. A little bit more complicated um, in you know, how they do their response, but by now you probably get the picture. For infrared counter countermeasure logic to actually work, there's two parts. There's the switch and then there's response. So as you can probably surmise, Gaijin has an enormous, you know, uh, amount of leeway here where when these new missiles come with their advanced infrared counter countermeasures, you know, Gaijin could basically, they can make all of this stuff up. Uh, they can make it as effective as they want it to be, um, whatever, you know, when it comes to balancing, the sky is the limit when it comes to Urkham. Um, 
I hope they do it right. I hope they do it justice. I hope they can actually model some of these things. Like I said, they're never going to get the real information from the manufacturers and the nations because that information is classified. So they're going to have to just give their best corporate guess, their best college try when it comes to how they're, they're going to choose to implement infrared counter countermeasures in the game. All right, guys, I hope this has been useful information to you. If it was, you know, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I know I hate to ask, but that kind of stuff actually helps channels like mine out, you know, to get up and get seen. So if uh, if you are feeling good and you like what you got and you saw some value, hit the subscribe button and I will see you in a future video. Thank you.